you're in a you're in a wonderful um are you in a, gar a garage there with a wonderful this car my Explain office and my and my my fun toy and my car really my, really good i know nothing about cars what kind of car am i looking at noah you are looking at a 1969 barracuda fastback oh my god that sounds so cool um it's like when it's it's uh uh it's it's a muscle car it's like a real deal like it's the Mad real you Max it's the real you car, shining man. out yeah um are you driving that around the neighborhood at the moment or are you sort of just mostly at home how's it working in los angeles uh so we are at home you know uh as much as we mm. possibly can um it it does drive but i don't i don't drive it regularly i mean i i keep it gassed up and and stuff like that but um no i mean we're you know maybe you know allison doesn't like that i go out once a week for groceries <laughs> yeah the weekly shop right um how I mean, like, how is it in a store I, I in new zealand there's typically like a queue that would take maybe 20 minutes to get through before you can get inside and start shopping? What's it like in Los Angeles? Well, we have, um, uh, so what do we have? We have, um, it seems like there's sort of two different versions. There's the, there's the, the line outside, yeah. which you'll find at the, um, sort of like the, 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 the more with it kind of hipper shops. Oh, is that like Trader Joe's? Is that hit? Where they'll have people lined up outside. Like a Trader Joe's, yeah, exactly. Like a Trader Joe's, they line you up outside and sort of very kind of performatively when you get to the front of the line 20 or 30 minutes later, they like kind of hand you a, 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 a they, they have someone who's like sanitizing right. right then and there, you know, and, and sort of performatively showing you this is a clean cart. And this is a, you know, it's, you know we're, we're going to make you comfortable. And then um, there's almost no one in the shop because they've limited the number of people in the shop so that you can stay far enough away. Yes, yeah, exactly then, the same in New Zealand. It's the same vibe. And, and, and you can sort of tell also that like they're, they're, they're doing a very, again, good job and performative job of, you know, at Trader Joe's, it's sort of, it's common that like you, you bag your own groceries and now they don't want you to do that. They'll bag the groceries. There's people wiping down all of the surfaces sort of, you know, because also because there's not, the store isn't as busy because they've limited the number of people. There's more people doing, you know, more. Yeah, all these little jobs. And I guess there's no feeling of avocados and stuff to see if they're ripe or not, right? None of that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, th and then at the other end of the spectrum is sort of like the, the, the larger chain shops where you kind of walk in, it's a bit of a free for all, um and uh then there's a very long queue to get out yeah right 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 um and you know but i mean that but that that line you know you've got usually got your cart and you're sort of using your cart to stay six feet from the person in front of you with their cart so there is something about it that also kind of works in a weird way you know yeah uh, yeah 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 it's brave but, times eh yeah uh so um down there are you um do you have access to everything? How, like, how's, how's the stuff? No, it's basically, it's, it's, I feel like it's similar to Los Angeles where it's just um, uh, sort of vital services only. So you can go to the doctor, chemists are open, and supermarkets are open. Everything else is completely shut. Right. Um, so it's a very similar situation. But it's, uh, everyone's just sort of reassessing how they work and what they can achieve. And it's, it's funny, I was just thinking, actually, probably the last film that I went to in cinemas was probably going to see Knives Out. Which, oh, no. <laughs> is it, which is very weird now um but like as, as you i can't know, tell if i should be honored or <laughs> <laughs> That's, no well i mean yeah. it's a thing where um i guess i'm wondering what it's like in your world now because and what's being discussed um in the world of you know because you're writing stuff you're in stuff um yeah. what because I, I was talking to, with a friend the other day sort of thinking like even when is it going to be normal or, or, you know, to even go to a cinema again and experience things in a, in a way that we're used to? Will that happen again? I don't know. What sort of discussions are you having with your friends and colleagues about all that kind of stuff? 
Well, I mean, I, uh, you know, I'm in, in my world, so I have, you know, I've, I've got movies in the can that I acted in that, you know, are, are, are not the kinds of movies that are necessarily, we're already necessarily dependent on having made a lot of money or got, got, got a lot of success in, in, in theaters. Mm. So not like a Knives Out, you know, like smaller films. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm sure that this d- doesn't, it, 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 it's not a good thing. But I don't know that it, you know, puts me sort of in the same mindset as somebody who, you know, has a has a big Hollywood blockbuster movie that they're worried about whether, you know, it's going to be able to make its money back or something like that. Or, um, uh, you know, the the stuff that I'm working on that I I wrote that I'm I'm working on to direct, you know, is still at a place where it needs people to to read it. It needs you know, actors to read the scripts and, you know. And now's probably a good time for that because everyone has literally got nothing to do. So it's probably a good time to get your stuff to people, right? I mean, that's that's been sort of, you know, with, with a lot of respect and, and a lot of sort of understanding that people's emotions are running a bit high and, you know, we're all a little bit, you know, our nerves are a bit raw. Um, you know, there's you know, yeah, if you're sitting at home and you want something nice to read, I've got something for you, you know? I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. none, of, none of the scripts that I've written are like, you know, they're all kind of funny, I hope, you know? I hope that there's a certain, yeah. like, you know? So, so I've got, anyway, I've got, I've got, you know, so in that respect, you know, it's sort of, a, you know, there's, there's definitely meetings that I'm having over the phone and over whatever Zoom, Zoom is yeah. everywhere right like yeah, god how much normally, traffic is Zoom getting um but uh uh in in in, in general you know I'm, I'm basically just trying to get people to read my scripts yeah, yeah um, totally. and you know my my wife allison is uh, she's writing a script she's 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 a television writer you know and and she's been she's got scripts that she has to write that she owes to her studio yeah and they expect them and you know luckily she can do that from you know, from, from self-isolation. Well, yeah, you can write anywhere. Um, well, what, what is the, what's your sanity level like over there? Are you, are you sort of going for lots of walks? Like what's the vibe in your neighborhood? Is it? We're fine. It's the thing, right? It's like you start to lose track of what day it is. We're doing great. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, we're very, I mean, listen, we're very, we're, we're very lucky. You know, we have, we have we have a nice house to live in, and we have uh, 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 help, and we're all uh, healthy, um, and and we we don't have you know uh, day jobs that we are compelled to go to. Yes. Um, in the same way that you know people who have to work at the grocery and people who have to you know be nurses and you know like you know really important shit that you have to go out and 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 risk yourself you know we we don't have to take too many risks at the moment um but that being said you know we uh we're having a baby in two weeks so that's a little bit two weeks away yeah see that god what it's it's like you picture talking to your kid right at some point in the future going like you know when you were born this is um this is what was going on you were born during this time and this is how we lived it is kind of like you're in a bunker i mean as as scary i'll tell you as scary as as it is and as sort of as as nerve-wracking as so much of day-to-day life has become because you're cooped up and you don't have the ability to do the things you would normally do um and we are you know i think it's it's safe to say that we're scared mm. you know uh i think um you know, there is a very small solace in the idea that, yeah, that, you know, someday we will be able to tell our son about this historic time he was born into. Yeah. And that's not a great consolation prize, but it is, it's a little, it's a little tiny consolation. You know, it's something. It's like, yeah, we're going to take what we can get at this time, right? Yeah, exactly. That's right. You know, um, but I mean, medically, it's like, you know, I haven't been able to go to any of the doctor's appointments yeah, uh, with Allison. So, you know, I drive her and I drop her off and she goes up and, you know, and... and yeah, uh, you wait in the um, car. Yeah, and I won't be able to, I'll, I'll be able to be there for the delivery. As of today, they said I'll be able to be there for the delivery 
but then I leave. And she and the baby will out. stay in the hospital for a few days without me. That's going to be so strange for both of you, eh? Like you just at home kind of yeah, what you want to be next to your wife's side, you know? It's going to be so, and I mean, and poor, poor June, our toddler is like going to be, her mind's going to be blown because I'm like, well, mommy will be back soon and we're going to bring your brother who, you know, normally, you know, you sort of have these, you know, of course everyone has these, you have your plans and you think, well, I'm going to bring June to the, you know, to the hospital and she'll meet her brother there and she'll sort of understand, you know, this is like, everything's new. Everything's new. Any um, any uh, tips from your end on what you're watching or listening to to stay um, to stay sane? Are you watching and flipping out over Tiger King like the rest of the entire? Oh my god! Show? Well, we yeah, we we made it through Tiger King, um, and uh, <laughs> uh, we made it through Tiger King and quite enjoyed Tiger King. Um, you know, we have a toddler, so we weren't gonna watch anything. You're gonna watch and anything. You know what I mean? Like we're, you know, we're we're already like we were already sort of behind, behind the 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 the, the group in terms of of what we were enjoying. Well, yeah, your priorities kind of shift when you have a kid, right? You're suddenly like being up with everything that's on uh, isn't as important as it once was. Yeah, you know, you just uh, I think you know you just don't don't have you know you you know you 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 chop out an hour here, you chop out an hour there, and then all of a sudden you know. The, the binge doesn't exist for the moment, you know, but we did yeah. start Succession, which I have not oh, watched. So fucking good, man. Yeah. Like the first episode's a bit rough, but then once you, once you get through that, it's just so brutal. And there's this game you'll end up playing with everybody, which is like, who's your favorite character of that episode? Because they're all yeah. assholes. Yeah. Certain ones you'll kind of side with in each episode um, and then across the season as well. And it's such a morally bankrupt, fun world there, Britain. I think, oh man, you're going to love that show. I really appreciate too, which I think is something that, that I've noticed a lot with HBO shows in particular, is that they're very good about making the show better over, over oh, time. Yeah. yeah. You know, which is the kind of classic thing I remember when I watched The Wire for the first time and I had tried to start watching The Wire five times and failed and people were just like, if you can get through those first few episodes and become invested and sort of get into the machinations and it was it was absolutely true. I had to power through, you know, this of course, you know, once, once you could stream and binge something and you weren't going out and renting a DVD one by one or whatever it was. You know, it, yeah, see, people absolutely hate me for this, but I haven't cracked pushing through that original Wire thing. So the Wire is still on my list of shows I know will be amazing and that I'll love, yeah. but I just haven't pushed through it yet. And that's exactly what I need to do. Now, what what are you watching? What are you? Oh, well, the thing is, I was actually quite gutted the other day because they um, they just announced that Succession season three has stopped, obviously stopped shooting and isn't going to be okay. put out. So that's like the one thing this year I was really hanging out for. Uh -huh. Uh, but no, I, um, I'm doing a really depressing thing. I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. And I've started to rewatch The Leftovers, which is pretty much the most depressing TV show on <laughs> in existence. So that's a mistake. Yeah. Uh, and um, yeah, me and the people I'm living with at the moment, we've just started watching like the original kind of, uh, I think there's about four of them, the original Batman films. So I think Michael Keaton. Um, oh, yeah. Is and they're pretty pretty extraordinary. Like the cast is is kind of amazing. So we started with um, with Keaton, and that was um, uh, Jack Nicholson uh, was the Joker. Yeah. And so we're going to progress through those this week. So leftovers and the original Batman films are where you do I do know it's only Keaton in the first two, right? Yeah. So it goes Keaton, and then it goes. Where does when does George Clooney come in? And Val fucking Kilmer is in there as the well, right? One. Yes. So Kilmer is Batman in number three, and then Keaton, and then and then Clooney. Okay. Is, is number four. The main thing I was surfing through um, cameo the other day, just super curious about who was on there, and Val Kilmer is on there, and it's mad when you think that fucking Val Kilmer, you know, Top Gun, he was yeah. Batman, and here he is on cameo. It's which is just a crazy world we live in, right? I, I wonder what you. Uh, what would be the best use of a Val Kilmer cameo? Like, I mean, obviously, like, it would be very nice if somebody said, here's Val wishing you a happy birthday or congratulations on the birth of your child. But, like, what is the, what is the most Val of I know, that's the thing, right? messages? 
I'd say I'm very, and, and I see people on Cameo and I think I would like to use them for something, but if you're going to pay that much money for something, you want it to be like a level above just a happy birthday or a... How much is Val? I mean, it can't be cheap. Val was like, I feel like he was like a hundred bucks or something. It wasn't insane. Um, but I, I just don't know. I, I just don't know what I'd do with him. Um, there's a short film um, that my friend Ben Berman just made, um, and it's just all assembled using cameos. So he just tells an entire story oh, wow. through um, through sort of his breakdown around Corona, um, and he reaches out to celebrities for counselling and for help and advice. And a lot of the advice some of the, them give are abs- is absolutely incorrect. Right. Rid of this really amazing narrative. So I mean, that's a good use for cameo. Sure. Uh, I'll send you the link to it because it's pretty incredible. I would love to. I would love to see that. And um, um, it's really funny. Make a sequel. I would love to be involved. <laughs> I would love to take part. Have you been approached to be on um, on cameo? I feel like you must have been by now. I don't know who would approach me. It's someone who will slide have... into your how it works. They'll slide into your Instagram DMs and be like, ah. I work for cameo. Do you want to sign up? You can make a lot of money. I mean, something to think about, right? I got, you know, I got two kids. (laughs) I'll take it. I mean, you know, it's, I'll take that, that cameo, those cameo bucks. I mean, Uh, just something. Are you, are you on cameo? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. I I, I feel that, um, that would be, um, not for me. It's not for me. I got to say. Do you think that the cameo, well, the thing is, I wouldn't go on it because I know my price would be so low, it would just be embarrassing. So even if I signed up, it'd be like, you want David Ferry? It'd be like a dollar. And it would just be too embarrassing. If I could get on there for like $1,000, maybe that would be good for my ego and I'd do it. But do you think that it would, do you think that as a journalist, it would be unethical to... Oh, absolutely. Oh, it'd be, it'd be ridiculous. It would be the most stupid thing I could possibly imagine. But... My Twitter DMs, I've got a couple from people that, that claim to be recruiters saying like, do you want to come on here, man? You make some good money. And um, it's very much a hard no from me for that. More, more cameos for me. 